what could you do to improve yourself? Well, let's step one step backwards. The first question might be, why should you even bother improving yourself? And I think the answer to that is something like, so you don't suffer any more stupidly than you have to. And maybe so others don't have to either. It's something like that. You know, like there's a real injunction at the bottom of it. It's not some casual self-help doctrine. It's that if you don't organize yourself properly, you'll pay for it. And in a big way, and so will the people around you. Now, and you could say, well, I don't care about that, but that's actually not true. You actually do care about that. Because if you're in pain, you will care about it. And so you do care about it, even if it's just that negative way, you know. Um, it's very rare that you can find someone who's in excruciating pain who would ever say, well, it would be no better if I was out of this. Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, a psychologist, author, online educator, and professor emeritus at the University of Toronto, offers valuable insights to guide your self-improvement journey. First, he suggests recognizing your imperfections. According to Peterson, you must acknowledge where you fall short and understand that self-reflection is the first step toward progress. But where do you begin? Peterson advises setting realistic goals. Instead of aiming impossibly high, start with objectives that challenge your current abilities yet offer a reasonable chance of success. Think of it as setting a bar that's just above your reach. This approach, Peterson argues, fosters humility, a vital trait in the improvement process. Think of it like weightlifting. When you start lifting weights, you don't begin with heavy loads. You start small, lifting what you can manage without straining yourself. Peterson's message here is clear. Start low, but start. Even the smallest improvement matters, especially if you're not in great shape initially. Sort of pain is one of those things that brings the idea that it would be better if it didn't exist along with it. It's incontrovertible. So you get your act together so that there isn't any more stupid pain around you than necessary. Well, so then the question might be, well, how would you go about getting your act together? And the answer to that, and this is a phenomenological idea too, it's something like, Look around for something that bothers you and see if you can fix it. So now you think, well, let's say, there, let's say you go into a, you can do this in a room. It's quite fun to do it just when you're sitting in a room, like a room, maybe your bedroom. You can sit there and just sort of meditate on it and think, okay, if I wanted to spend 10 minutes making this room better, what would I have to do? And you have to ask yourself that, right? It's not a command. It's like a genuine question. And things will pop out in the room that you know, you like there's a stack of papers over there that's kind of bugging you and you know that maybe little order there would be a good thing. And you know, you haven't, there's some rubbish behind your computer monitor that you haven't attended to for like six months. And the room would be slightly better if it was a little less dusty and the cables weren't all tangled up the same way. And like, if you, if you allow yourself just to consider the expanse in which you exist at that moment, There'll be all sorts of things that'll pop out in it that you could just fix. And, you know, I might say, well, if you were coming to see me for psychotherapy, the easiest thing for us to do first would just be to get you to organize your room. You think, well, is that psychotherapy? And the answer is, well, it depends on how you conceive the limits of your being. And I would say, start where you can start. You know, if, if something announces itself to you, which is a strange way of thinking about it, as in need of repair, that you could repair, then, hey, fix it. You fix a hundred things like that, your life will be a lot different. Now, I often tell people too, fix the things you repeat every day. Taking those baby steps today sets you up for more significant strides tomorrow. This process of gradual progress is essential, and Peterson actually emphasizes the power of incremental steps. He says that each small achievement compounds over time, putting you in a position to take slightly larger steps in the days that follow. It's a snowball effect. A little progress today means you can tackle a bit more tomorrow and even more the day after that. Peterson also introduces the concept of the Matthew Principle, stating that success begets success, just as failure breeds further setbacks. 
This principle underscores the importance of consistent effort. Your accomplishments will grow as you continue to improve, propelling you further along your journey. So, embrace your imperfections and set achievable goals, no matter how small they may seem. After all, starting with what you can handle is the best way to make your progress snowball. And you might say, well, of course, you know, it's that, that underestimates the degree to which there's systemic oppression, et cetera, et cetera, and, and, the, and the vagaries of fate. It's like it doesn't over underestimate it. It's not the point. The point is your best strategic position is how am I insufficient and how can I rectify that? That's what you've got. And the thing is, you are insufficient and you could rectify. It. Both of those are within your grasp. If you aim low enough, one of the things why you do you do, see that that's another thing you keep saying aim low enough have a low enough bar why do you why do you mean that well let's say you've got a kid and you want the kid to improve you don't set them a bar that's so high that it's impossible for them to attain it you take a look at the kid and you think okay this kid's got this range of skill here's a challenge we can throw at him or her that exceeds their current level of skill but gives them a reasonable probability of success and so like i'm saying it tongue-in-cheek to some degree mm -hmm. you know it's like but if you're but I'm doing it as an aid to humility. It's like, well, I don't know how to start improving my life. Someone might say that. And I would say, well, you're not aiming low enough. There's something you could do that you are regarding as trivial that, that, that you could do, that you would do, that would result in an actual improvement. But it's not a big enough improvement for you. So you won't lower yourself enough to take the opportunity. Incremental steps. And, yes. And, and So this is also what is achieved through exercise. It's one of the most important. Yeah. Well, what do you do when you go and lift weights? Yeah. You don't go and, like if you haven't right, bench pressed before, you don't put 400 pounds on the damn bar and drop the, and drop the bar through your skull. Right. You know, you think, look, when I started working out when I was a kid, I was, I was weighed about 130 pounds and I was six foot one. I was a thin kid and I smoked a lot. I wasn't in good shape. I wasn't in good physical shape. And I went to the gym and it was bloody embarrassing, you know, and people would come over and help me with the goddamn weights. Here's how you're supposed to use this. You know, it was humiliating. And maybe I was pressing 65 pounds or something at that point, you know, but what am I going to do? I'm going to lift up 150 pounds and injure myself right off the bat? No, I had to go in there and strip down and put my skinny goddamn self in front of the mirror and think, son of a bitch, there's all these monsters in the gym been lifting weights for 10 years, and I'm struggling to get 50 pounds off the bar. Tough luck for me, but I could lift 50 pounds, and it wasn't very long until I could lift 75. And Well, you know how it goes, but, and I never injured myself when I was weightlifting, and the reason for that was I never pushed myself past where I knew I could go, and I pushed myself a lot. You know, I gained 35 pounds of muscle in about three years in, in university. I kind of had to quit because I was eating so goddamn much I couldn't stand it eating like six meals a day. It was just taking up too much time. But there's a humility in determining what it is that the wretched creature that you are can actually manage. Aim low. And I, I don't mean don't aim. And I don't mean don't aim up. But you have to accept the fact that you can set yourself a goal that you can attain. And there's not going to be much glory in it to begin with. Because if you're not in very good shape, the goal that you could, could attain tomorrow isn't very glorious. But it, it's a hell of a lot better than nothing, and it beats the hell out of bitterness, and it's way better than blaming someone else. It's way less dangerous, and you could do it. And what's cool about it, there's a statement in the New Testament. It's called the Matthew Principle, and economists use it to describe how the economy and the world works. To those who have everything, more will be given. From those who have nothing, everything will be taken. It's like what's very pessimistic in some sense, because it means that as you start to fail, you fail more and more rapidly. But it also means that as you start to succeed, you succeed more and more rapidly. And so you take an incremental step and, well, now you can lift 55 pounds instead of 52.5 pounds and think, well, what the hell is that? It's like it's one step on a very long journey. And so it's it, and it starts to compound on you. So a small step today means puts you in a position to take a slightly bigger step the next day. And then that puts you in a position to take a slightly bigger step the next day. And you do that for two or three years, man, you're starting to stride. Most of all, remember that in the end, it's the commitment to continuous incremental progress that leads to lasting self-improvement. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more motivational, life-changing videos like this one. And as always, Thank you for watching.